please welcome direct from our online campus and Eugene, Oregon, Ron Trunnell. Um, wow. Good morning. I can't even tell you what a thrill it is to be here, to be home. So, if you don't mind, I have this need to love on you. So if you'll just bear with me just a moment. So, Whatever you brought in with you today, whoever you showed up as, just know that you've been loved on and that you've been seen. And in that really what we all want is just to be loved, not for who people think we are or who we might feel like we have to pretend to be, but for people to really see us and really love us. That song, Higher Ground, I think speaks to it. My guess is that's why we're here today, is because there is some sort of call, something within us that invites us forward. And so you might be wondering, why are we talking about when things go wrong. <laughs> Come on, Ron, you're supposed to talk about when things go right. Maybe it's just me. But sometimes it feels like there's a pebble, maybe followed by a rock, <laughs> maybe followed by a boulder. And it's easy for me to find myself in that place of not feeling like everything is good, feeling like things are wrong. I have a tendency in my mind to go around and put sticky notes on stuff. <laughs> this is bad. This is awful. This hurts. I don't like that. And when I'm feeling separate, Boy, I, I just, I need every single one of these, right? Because I can just be placing these everywhere. And yet, I also will find good things. Oh, I like that. Ooh, I love that. That feels good. But you could really tell where I'm really at by how many sticky notes there are. How many red versus how many green? And pretty soon, it's easy to end up like that, to the point where I can't even see what I'm doing or who I'm being or what I'm choosing. It clouds my mind and it has lasting impacts because it's creative. This is awful. Yes, my beloved. <laughs> this scares me. Yes, my beloved. So I have to be careful with that. And so where does this perception come from? Right? We've, you just heard, I've been in this teaching for 25 years. How could I still be picking up the red sticky notes? <laughs> There's some hard wiring that took place in the many years before that 25 years. There's some memories, there's some perceptions, there's still some old beliefs that tell me I'm not enough. I don't measure up. Now, thankfully, there are some things that I can, I can do um, when I start moving into that area of dualistic thinking good, bad. 
There's a quote from um, Richard Rohr, who's a Franciscan priest. Dualistic thinking is the well-practiced pattern of knowing most things by comparison. You move into a pattern of up, down, in, out, for me or against me, right or wrong, black or white, gay or straight, good or bad. It is the basic reason why the stinking thinking or racism, sexism, classism, homophobia, religious imperialism, and prejudice of all kinds is so hard to overcome and has lasted so long. I have to remember the green sticky notes. I have to remember that there's a different way of showing up. But it takes that conscious choice. I have to make the decision, and I have to commit. I can't rely on autopilot. Now, we know that we want to avoid spiritual bypass, right? I mean, even by the, most, the visual in my head, as I hear my say, myself say, it's all good, <laughs> right? No, everything's fine. Everything's fine. I'm trying to get to that place of knowing that everything's good, but I'm coming at it from the red sticky note place. I can say I believe something all day long, but until I feel that belief, until that belief permeates me, I'm not going to see a shift. And so one of the ways to do that is to look beyond that thing that I put the red sticky note on, that time of hurt, that time of pain, that, that wrong, that where you have not been treated as you should have been treated. It's to simply look beyond that. Now, I'm not proposing that sitting here today, you can get to the green sticky on that situation. But there's still some things that we can do around that. So we look for the good, we look for the truth. Here's another quote from Neil Walsh, who um, wrote Conversations with God. It has been said that if you don't see God in the profane and the profound, you're missing half the story. This is a great truth. God is in the sadness and the laughter, in the bitter and the sweet. There is a divine purpose behind everything, and therefore, a divine presence in everything. So I would, my suggestion is that you, we start within. We start from the micro. Because if I wanna see a shift in experiences out there, it has to start in here. So I have to find that level of peace. Sometimes even that level of neutrality and remove that charge of the red sticky. Another tool that I use is looking back. As I said, when we're in the midst of the tornado, it can be hard to see the light. It can be hard to know that this too is serving some higher good. Hard to see. But if I look in my rear view mirror at a painful experience in my life, Maybe I can have a different perspective on it today. And I can use that as the science, as the evidence that I'm seeking. As Rachel mentioned, I found NVC at the suggestion of a counselor. 
Because when he asked where I was getting spiritually fed, I laughed. What? <laughs> I didn't even know what that meant, let alone how to receive it. And so I came, took several weeks, of course, because, you know, you don't always want to jump right in. <laughs> and I sat in the back row. It was um, the Bible series that Reverend Michelle used to do. And it was about um, the angel wrestling Jacob. And um, Jacob had the, and forgive me if I get the, you know, the story is as I see it, <laughs> has, has the angel pinned. And the angel saying, let me up, let me up. And Jacob says, not until you bless me. Not until you bless me. And I sat in that back row and cried. Because I got that little bit of glimmer. That little bit of glimmer. That maybe I was plagued by these challenges because I kept resisting them. I kept saying, this can't be. This is going to change. This, this can't be. I don't accept it. But I didn't have anything beyond that. And so a few weeks later, well, maybe a month later, after coming here on Sunday, feeling really good, starting to feel a little more comfortable, but going home and drinking right after and kind of wondering why these teachings didn't seem to stick. <laughs> so I'm just going to have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> it got to the point where it was still me and everyone else. No one could understand the pain that I was going through. Does that sound familiar? Maybe some of you are feeling that right now, and I honor that. It got to the point of, I don't have a choice. I'm going to need to exit this life. When we don't know what to do, we grab for anything, right? We, we, are, we are grasping for hope. We are grasping for a way out. And I don't know why me, how, anything like that, but I was given this moment of grace. I was standing in this apartment that I could not afford, and all of a sudden I had a thought that maybe those goodbye letters I had just written weren't as cathartic as they seemed. Huh, isn't that interesting? So I reached out and I called that therapist that had recommended New Vision Center and said, you know, I, I really feel like I've made some progress. I found peace with these relationships that have been torturing me because now I've told them how much they harmed me and, um, and they'll find that once I'm gone. And he said, why don't you bring those with you? Hey, <laughs> just come visit with me. <laughs> So I thought, good, someone wants to hear my tale of woe. But it took the depth of that darkness, of that bleakness, of that point of life is too painful, I have to find a way out for me to have that moment. And so let's just fast forward. Today is 24 years 364 days of sobriety. And and I share that with you. Thank you for the applause, of course, but I share that with you because that was the darkest, that was the most painful, that was the most tragic I'd ever felt in my life. And it is the best thing that has ever 
happened in my life. It became that springboard. It became that um, launching off place to so much more. Mentioned I met Ken here. I was six months sober, much to my <laughs> sponsor's chagrin. And um, the most powerful relationship, the most loving relationship, the most caring relationship I can ever imagine. And it all came from that deep, dark place. And so my point on that is really I had clearly done this, but at any moment, any moment, I can do this instead. And there's that shift of perspective. There's that shift of reality. You know, it's, it's about faith. Because I have the evidence of that situation and several more, scientifically, statistically, I won't go statistically. <laughs> if it was true then, it's true now. And just because I'm clouded by the red sticky and I can't see it does not mean does not mean it's not fully present, simply waiting to be revealed. And in those times I can't see it, that's okay. We have a community of people that will see it for us and love us through it all. One more note on that piece is finding the path to the divine in the darkness, in that place of obstruction, to whatever degree that obstruction is. Sometimes it's, it's traffic. Beauty is the pathway to the divine. So when you're in the midst of it, find beauty. Walk outside. If you're sitting here, maybe look at this. The way it shines, the way it sparkles in the light. Beauty, the divine. And if it's there, it has to be here. And it has to be here. No exceptions. None of us is made of Teflon. And I have another quote from Pema Chodron, who is a um, Buddhist nun, I believe. Instead of making others right or wrong or bottling up right or wrong in ourselves, there's a middle way a very powerful middle way, not hanging on to our version quite so tightly. And that's what I was saying earlier about even when I cannot see through my own hand or my own sticky note, what if I can just move the sticky note to the side? When I see something that I identify as wrong, bad, evil, whatever that label is, what if I just try to move into that space of neutrality? And then perhaps another step. Perhaps one more step and only one more step to love. It's a process and it's a gift. And I can assure you that if any of that is possible for me, it is also possible for you.
There are no exceptions. And so I have a couple takeaways. One of them might be daily, substantial, <laughs> spiritual practice. Thank you. <laughs> The role of gratitude and leaning in. It's not unlike finding the beauty, the beauty, and really looking at it and putting your whole purpose and intention upon it. And where might this lead to something greater? Where might this lead to something greater? There's that place of neutrality. Remove the red sticky and just be. Be present. Be aware. Call out the good. And you know, if you have to, if you have to pull out the stickies, because <laughs> it can be automatic, grab the green. I love you. Thank you. Oh, please join me in a spiritual mind treatment as we simply recognize that spirit is in all and as all that this one perfect life is never contingent on being recognized or even being seen. It simply is. And so I lean into that truth of the goodness of life, of the love that life is. and of that deep well within each of us to allow that love to flow in and out, within, without. For each one of us is that divine incarnation of spirit expressing, receiving the love that God is. And so I know that as each one of us reflects on those times in the past where perhaps we were befuddled, lost, confused, hurt, that God was and is present. And that the divine spirit is available is willing and able to create this shift. The shift in perception, the shift in ideas, and the shift of circumstances. And so right here and now, I bless it all. I give thanks for all of the good. I give thanks for this loving, magnificent community. I give thanks for all of the gifts that are shared so freely. Mm. And with this sense of assuredness, I give thanks for all of the good yet to be revealed. Knowing that each one of us is that divine revealment, is that divine good. And so I allow it to be I allow the good to reveal, I allow the good to be expressed, and I allow that love to flow. Thank you, life. Thank you, God. So it is. <laughs>